Let's start things off right with a big old chicken. I'm going to be baking this guy off today, and tomorrow we'll be using the leftovers to make soup. First things first, we're getting weird. If you don't like raw meat, this may not be the episode for you. We're going to lay this bird down, and I'm going to show you where the backbone is. Look at that. Let's flip her around. And remember to always cut away from yourself. There's no need to get hurt over a chicken dinner. If you don't already own a set of kitchen scissors, I highly recommend you get a pair. They make jobs like this infinitely easier and they have so many uses around the kitchen. There's a lot of flavor and nutrient hidden away in the bones of this bird. Once you have the spine removed, bake it off with the rest of the chicken in the same pan. Whatever leftovers you have, keep the bones. We're gonna use that all for tomorrow's stock as well. This method is called spatchcocking. I have no idea why it's called that, but I do know that it makes it so that all the meat cooks really evenly. Open up the chest cavity and get the bird used to laying flat. It's gonna roast better this way. However, in the next slide, I'm gonna break the sternum, so if you're squeamish, fast forward a few seconds, all right? Now that our bird's back is all adjusted and relaxed, we're going to give it a rejuvenating facial. Take your fingers and guide your way in between the meat and the skin. Believe me, I know this looks weird, but we're going to fill these pockets up with butter and duck fat, and I swear it'll pay off. Occasionally you'll get a limb like I did here where the skin is very attached to the meat. Just keep working your fingers along the edge of it and you'll get it off. Don't puncture through the skin. We really want to try to keep as much fat as possible in between those layers. Now before I throw this bird in the roasting pan, I'm going to season the inside of the chest cavity with salt and pepper. This step not only seasons your meat today, but also your stock tomorrow. Finally, a wholesome shot without a dead bird in it. Let's talk about what's in that bowl up there. That's a combination equal parts of duck fat and grass fed butter. That's gonna be the base for what we're filling up those skin cavities with. To that mixture, I'm going to add two microplane cloves of garlic. I like the use of the microplane here because it makes very fine shreds that distribute evenly. Next up, I'm going to zest this Meyer lemon. This guy is homegrown so he's particularly perfumey. I'm not going to do a ton of zest because we're also going to do the juice of this lemon as well. Let's cut this guy in half and get to juicing. There's a decent amount of seeds in there, so always squeeze with a squeezer or into your own hand. This will ensure you catch the seeds before they fall into your mix. Got him. Next up, I'm throwing in some parsley. It's nice to green things up a bit, and it gives it a little bit of an herbaceous flavor. Throw a little bit of salt and pepper in there and relax while I stir.
Alright, now that we're out of that trance, let's check out this bag. I keep this in my freezer at all times. It's full of odds and ends of vegetables I've cut up throughout the week. It makes for great stock bases. So throw your lemons in there, throw it back in the freezer, and save it for tomorrow. Back to chicken business. It's time to load up these skin cavities with all of this butter. I like feeding it in there with a spoon. Sometimes you'll be met with a little bit of resistance, but just keep working at it and eventually you'll fill everything up. You can always flip the spoon over to guide you further down into the cavity, making sure that you get a little bit of fat everywhere. While you're filling up your chicken, set your oven to 450 degrees to preheat. Don't forget to dress the top of the chicken as well. Pour the remaining fat over the rest of the chicken and make sure to hit it with some salt and pepper before you throw it in. The chicken wings are the fastest part of the bird to cook, so you want to tuck it behind the bird like it's reclining and getting a nice tan. Some chickens are more resistant than others, so just keep working at it and eventually you'll get that wing behind there. As you can see, I just popped one out from moving it around the pan. Just push it back in there and let's get going. Don't forget to salt and pepper and then throw it in the oven for about 45 minutes. That was not smooth. I'm not strong enough. Garnish and plate. I really love how this one turned out. I hope you guys do too. It's good. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe, like, and comment.